On Wisconsin's northeastern border, where the Menominee River meets the Bay of Green Bay, you'll find the city of Marinette. It's a small town, home to only about 10,000 people. Many of them, like Chuck and Cindy Boyle, have raised their families here. This area is so remarkable. The scenery is incredible. We have this enormous amount of water, natural resources. It's absolutely beautiful. But the people here are really, really warm. They're really friendly. They're hardworking. Water is central to the way of life here, from building the world's ships to fishing along the riverbanks. But recently, the water has become the focus of this community's biggest worry. When I first learned about some of the literal consequences of it, it was terrifying. The story of the contamination crisis begins here at the nearly 400-acre Fire Technology Center in the heart of Marinette. The complex is operated by Tyco Fire Products, which is now a subsidiary of Johnson Controls International. For five decades, the company has been testing firefighting products on this site. One of their most popular products is called AFFF Foam. When responding to the world's most extreme fire hazards, our foam products help you protect what matters most. It's used to smother industrial and chemical fires using a key ingredient known as per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFOS. PFOS is a group of compounds, um, sometimes called forever compounds, um, that were created in the 1940s that basically do great things um, when used in manufacturing. Um, Scotchgard, Teflon, uh, your Gore-Tex jacket, stain resistant. But once they enter the environment, um, it's very hard to contain them and they tend to move very quickly in the environment. Exposure to PFAS has been linked to a host of serious medical conditions, including an increased risk of developing certain types of cancer, unbeknown to the residents in this northeastern Wisconsin community, PFAS had been seeping out from Tycho's property into their backyards. One of those backyards belongs to Ruth and John Kowalski. Their home is in the town of Peshtigo, which neighbors Marinette. And until the fall of 2017, neither of them had ever heard of PFAS. We received a letter and it explained about the contamination in the underground water. The Kowalskis have lived on County Road B in Peshtigo since 1981. They raised their two daughters here, and for much of that time, they were drinking out of a well in their backyard. So when the news of the contamination broke, they wanted answers. And we've lived here long enough. I said, I want to have my blood tested. Tests showed both Ruth and John had elevated levels of PFAS in their blood. Their doctor told them it's too soon to know what that will mean for their health. But the creek next to their home, where their daughters would often play, showed levels of PFAS at 1,200 parts per trillion, more than 60 times higher than the standard proposed by the state of Wisconsin to protect public health. I'm appalled for myself, not so much for children. How dare they? Johnson Controls has started distributing bottled water to homes in the neighborhood. When my grandkids are here, I use it to wash any of the utensils. The company has also pledged $140 million to clean up the contamination zone. But the Kowalskis say they're still worried about the future. I don't let my grandchildren bathe here anymore. I, and we wash all the dishes with the bottled water before they're here. I don't want them because, to me, children are the ones that are going to be most likely hurt the most by this. Just down the road, Chuck and Cindy Boyle are in a similar situation. For years, the couple has lived and worked in this community, operating their own graphic design and signage business. They bought several parcels of land along the bay, which they hoped would stay in their family for generations, until PFAS put everything on hold. And you work really, really hard to do everything right, to make sure that you know financially you can sustain that and to build your dream correctly. And we did everything right. And then this comes up and it's just like, it just makes me wild because it took every choice we had about this away. So the Boyles decided to make another choice, to take action. And I thought to myself, this isn't gonna happen under my watch. I'm gonna make a difference. They enlisted the help of former I mean, Marinette Mayor Doug Oitzinger. I mean, this is all contaminated. Groundwater is contaminated. 
and together they formed a group called Save Our Water. We have no idea how many years this stuff has been contaminating folks. Among other things, the group is demanding to know why Tyco Fire Products failed to report test results in 2013 showing high levels of PFAS in the water and soil on its property. We're all standing on contaminated property. We don't know what the long-term effects of our health are. We don't know what the long-term effects are for our economy if this bay is polluted. This is a, a crisis of contamination. This is a problem that will be here for decades. The company says it thought the contamination was contained to the Fire Technology Center. But Darcy Foss from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources says Tyco could have mitigated some of the effects by reporting it sooner. They are required to report those results to the DNR um, immediately. I think we thought this problem was, from an environmental standpoint, a little more isolated and more on um, Johnson Controls Tyco's property, and it keeps just growing and growing. We have neighbors that have four, five, six hundred parts per trillion in their drinking water and they let them drink it for four more years. I find it immoral and unconscionable. Elevated levels of PFAS have also been found in some of the area's wildlife, likely the result of drinking from contaminated creeks and streams. And much of that contaminated water empties directly into the bay the city uses for its drinking water supply. We got deer that are probably consuming contaminated water. We have ducks and geese, and then I mentioned fish out in the bay. So there's a whole lot of wildlife concerns about this contamination. It's not only humans, it's the environment and human health. It's both. The problems don't end at the city limits. Many farms outside of Marinette use treated sludge from the city's wastewater treatment plant to fertilize their crops. Test results taken after 2017 showed much of the sludge they've been using contained PFAS. And there's new concern that many of the crops grown here contain PFAS as well. It's scary. It's scary. It's like we're at the tip of the iceberg here. The calls for accountability in northeastern Wisconsin continue to grow. Neighbors have been showing up by the hundreds, urging the state to crack down on PFAS. Among other things, they want state standards to regulate the chemicals. And there's new hope that might happen. The first time in 10 years, the Wisconsin Department of Health changed its standards to more aggressively combat the amount of PFAS allowed in the groundwater. And in the first year of his administration, Governor Tony Evers has emerged as a leader in tackling the crisis. Working with Democrats in the state legislature, Evers proposed one of the most comprehensive PFAS bills in the nation and issued an executive order creating a state council to address the chemicals. But there are still many looming questions. Chief among them, how severely will exposure to PFAS affect health in the long run? Health experts say it's still too early to answer that question. What, what, what happens? What do we have to wait? Ugh, don't even get me going. Do you have to wait for 20 years to see the consequences to your kids? It's almost certain the so-called forever chemicals will remain in the environment here as an ugly scar for years to come. In some of these places, it will be quite a, a long time before the environment um, gets restored. And are we talking months, years, decades? At least probably decades, yes. Despite the danger, many who live here say they're not going anywhere. And they're adamant that the way this crisis is handled will set the tone for the future. We have PFAS problems all over the state. This just happens to be the worst one and the one which is setting the standard for how we're going to treat every other PFAS problem. For Clean Wisconsin, I'm Oliver Redstone.